Hi, I recently posted a review of iFlix, which is a movie and TV streaming service. It's very similar to Netflix, but it's aimed at the Asian market, specifically right now the Philippines. Now I mentioned in that video that there's another streaming service, which is a competitor or an alternative to iFlix, which is Hook. Now Hook is operated by Singtel, Warner Brothers, Sony, and it's brought to the Philippines by Globe. So those are some really big names behind this project. I want to start by saying thank you to Lujin at Hook for giving me a free trial to basically bring you this video to test it out and give my feedback. Now if you're like me, you may have already heard of Hook weeks or perhaps months ago. And that's because Globe often mention it in their messages like sign up and get free Hook, get Hook, one gigabyte Hook and so on. And to be honest, Globe sent me so many text messages that I don't really read them properly anymore. And I ask my friends, have you heard of Hook? Do you know what Hook is? And they will say, no, I don't know. I saw something in my text messages. What is it? So this is what it is. It's a video streaming platform, very similar to Netflix and other streaming platforms out there. Now as you'd expect you can use Hook on a Mac, a Windows machine, an iPhone, an Android phone, tablets, pretty much every device can run Hook so that's really good. It costs 199 peso a month, it's a little bit higher than iFlix but it's still pretty cheap. Now Hook relies on the Silverlight plugin and unfortunately Chrome doesn't support the Silverlight plugin anymore. There are ways to adjust the settings and force it to support Silverlight but even that option to override the support is going to be removed in September. So come September you won't be able to use Hook in the Chrome browser. You'll have to use either Internet Explorer Firefox or Safari. Now I did have some compatibility issues. I was able to run it on Internet Explorer 11 but I couldn't get it to work on IE 8 or Project Spartan which is the new Microsoft browser. So your mileage may vary. Personally I'd rather they just had a HTML5 based player like iFlix do so you can just open it in any modern browser and start streaming straight away. No need for plugins, no need for compatibility. So the first thing you see when you log in is this cover art style of movies and TV shows. So when you scroll down, you can see that generally the bigger the box, the more popular a show is or more popular a movie is. Now, unfortunately, the layout is not responsive. So you can see it's only using a part of my screen. It's not expanding to the full width. And if I resize my browser, you'll see that instead of adjusting the content, it simply cuts it off. So again, that's a little tweak they can make to the layout just to make it more friendly across different devices. Of course I can just zoom in a couple of times and that makes it a lot more usable. I'm not really a fan of the cover art style um, way of laying out the content. I find it a little bit difficult and a little bit distracting to see what's actually available. So again another nice option, a user preference would be that you could adjust it by a list style or a grid style or cover art, um, very similar to the options that are available in Kodi or XBMC. So I do hope that one day that feature will come. Now when you actually start looking through the content here, you'll soon realize that there is a lot of content. Um, at the time of shooting this video, there was around 4,100 movies on this service. So that's a lot of content. Um, but only 1,000 of those were English, 1,000 are Tagalog, and around 2,000 are Bollywood movies. So there's a lot of local content and not so much Hollywood content at the moment anyway, but they are adding content so as a Filipino, you might prefer Hook over iFlix because there's a local content. Talaga. Now, if you're interested in the breakdown of the movies, you can see the biggest percentage is drama, and I think a lot of those are Bollywood movies. Then you have comedy 13%, Hollywood 13%, romance 10%, and then the rest are just smaller percentages. So that gives you an idea of the genre breakdown of the movies that they currently have on the service. So let's go ahead and try and start a stream. Just choose a random movie. I don't know this movie personally. Now one thing you'll notice is that loading content takes a little bit longer than other streaming services like YouTube or iFlix and I think that has to do with the silver light initializing and making the secure connection. As you can see it's still loading now but once it does load it's very quick to jump around parts of the movie so you can see it's streaming now um, and before I skip ahead to another part I want to tell you that it takes a while to stabilize. Um, basically, you can have a blocky image for maybe five or 10 seconds, but then it kind of stabilizes and you get a nice smooth crystal image. So if I jump ahead, 
you'll see that it just took maybe one second, two seconds. So it's very quick once the stream's actually open to be able to jump around different points of the stream. But just be aware that when you do jump, it might take five or 10 seconds for the picture to smooth out and give you a crystal image again. Now the ratio of this movie seems a bit odd because you can see it doesn't fill my whole screen. This is actually the first time I've come across a movie on Hook that does that. Let me try and open another movie. So you can see this one fills the screen without any issue. And if I left it for five or 10 seconds, it would probably smooth out the picture. Now, when it comes to the quality of the stream, Hook are ahead of iFlix because iFlix don't support HD. Whereas with Hook, I was able to completely max out my bandwidth and get a really high quality crystal clear image. Um, so that's a big difference. And that's really a big plus for Hook because when you're streaming, you don't want a blocky image or you know, a 360 or 480 quality. You want 720 or 1080. As for the player itself, I don't really like it. Um, I found that it's not so reliable. Sometimes when I adjust the volume, I, um, this little volume bar doesn't actually disappear. Just then it disappeared, but sometimes it just stays on the screen and it gets stuck here. Other times this control bar at the bottom disappears and then I can't seem to get it back on the screen. So I can't pause it, I can't adjust the volume, I can't skip ahead or back. Um, so that's kind of annoying. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens often enough that it becomes annoying. And each time I have to close the stream and then open it again. Now, when I did a trace route of the host that's serving this video, um, it went back to Edge Suite, which is Akami, which is the same as iFlix are using. So you'd expect them both to load at the same speed, stream at the same speed, but they don't. I can only imagine that it's because Hook used Quick Play and Silverlight and iFlix used Vmond and a HTML5 based player. Um, it's not a big deal, but you do notice a difference. Now you'll notice some settings in the Hook player. You have subtitles. Not many movies or TV shows seem to have the subtitles, um, but it is there as an option. So if they add them, you'll be able to access them. Audio tracks, so that's good for movies that have dual, um, dual language audio tracks, for example. And then quality, high, medium, and low. Now, this is something you don't have on iFlix. On iFlix, you can't adjust the quality. They decide the quality that they're gonna stream it to you based on your bandwidth, their available bandwidth, etc. Whereas on here, you can set between high, medium, and low. Now, bear in mind that when you do make a change, it's gonna take a little while before you see that change reflect in the quality of the video. So give it five or 10 seconds to adjust. So now I'll bring the camera closer and we'll look at Hook on a mobile device. Now this is where it really excels. Now unfortunately I couldn't install Hook on my iPhone. The Apple App Store is notoriously difficult about the country that you're in, the country that you signed up from, the app, uh, the device that you have and so on. So I'm hoping that Hook can just remove any restrictions that they might have placed on there because the content is already protected by your username and password anyway. Plus they're doing an IP check to make sure you are in the Philippines. So even if someone in say Afghanistan installed this app, they wouldn't be able to access the content anyway so yeah you probably won't have any problem installing it on your i device but some people might now i really like the mobile app i think the cover art style works quite well here um, and i think it feels pretty responsive and quick to open content so if we open men in black click play just let it connect And you see it's now playing and we can skip ahead. It's a little bit of a delay, but nothing major. And the quality is pretty good. Of course, on a smaller screen, you don't have to stream such a large file and still make it look really good. I can't stream too much because of copyright reasons. Now I know what you're thinking, download button. That's right, you can actually download content and watch it later even without an internet connection. So this is good if you're planning to travel or if you have a slow internet connection so you can't stream but you can download. So let's turn off our Wi-Fi and you'll see that the app says you're currently offline, etc, etc. So if we click use offline mode, so you'll see I have three movies here. This one I downloaded low resolution, this one medium, and this one high. Now this consumed 380 megabytes of data, this one consumed 810 meg of data, and this one consumed 1.6 gigabytes. So that gives you an idea of how much um, data you're gonna consume depending on whether you download low, medium, or high. Now you can have up to five movies downloaded at a time. Um, so if I click play on this one, 
even without an internet connection, it will open and start playing because it's downloaded a copy of the video. And I can jump around. It does take a little while loading it, um, and I think that's probably something to do with the decryption of the video file. So you can see that works fine. Um, strangely, these two movies don't seem to be working. Ghosts of Girlfriend's Past and Diary Nang Banget. If I tried to play this one, it looks like it's going to open, but then it just closes. They've both fully downloaded, so I'm not really sure what's happening with them. Very strange. Now, if you do try to download and stream at the same time, it will actually pause your download. I assume that's on the assumption that you wouldn't have enough bandwidth to download and stream at good quality at the same time. I don't know if they should make that assumption. It should probably be a user option instead of forcing that on the user. Now, one thing you'll notice is that not every movie can be downloaded. For instance, you again doesn't have a download option. Iron Man 2, no download option. Let's flick through, uh, what's this, Mummy Returns, that one has download option. So you just click download and it queues it, but basically it starts downloading straight away. Now unfortunately it doesn't give you much information about the download, it doesn't tell you how fast it's downloading, it doesn't tell you how much it needs to download, it doesn't tell you how much it's already downloaded. We have this, this pie chart which gives you a rough idea of how much it's done and how much it's got left. One limitation of Hook is that you can only stream on two devices at the same time. Now that seems a little bit low, especially because iFlix allow up to five devices streaming simultaneously. Now one annoying thing about that two device limit is that if you forget to log out of one of your platforms, for instance on your computer, it's still going to consider you logged in. It does eventually log you out, but it seems to take quite a long time. So for instance, let's say a family member is streaming on their cell phone and you're streaming on the computer, then you shut down the computer and you want to try stream on your phone. It won't let you because it thinks that your family member is streaming and your computer is streaming, even though you've already shut it down. Now at that point you have two choices. You can either boot the computer up, load up hook, log out, and then you're fine. Or you can wait for their server to realize that your computer is no longer using the service and it will log you out automatically. Either way, it's kind of a hassle. Now I previously said in another video that Hook don't offer a free trial and that's wrong, they do. They have a 30 day free trial but you have to register with a credit card. Now within those first 30 days they won't charge you anything but if you continue to use the service they'll be charging you the 199 peso a month. Now if you're a Globe prepaid subscriber you can just text Hook199 to 8888. So it's very similar to subscribing to Supersurf or GoSurf or any of the other promos. Now if you're using Hook on a Globe 3G or 4G connection, remember that you have a daily cap. Um, it can be 800 meg or 1 gig. And remember, Hook isn't just for Globe customers. You can use it on PLDT, Biontel, Sky Broadband, pretty much any ISP in the Philippines. Um, but if you're not with Globe, then you have to pay Hook directly on their website using a credit card, which is 199 peso a month. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and please give me a thumbs up and subscribe.